Hello everyone and welcome to the class of natural gas engineering. This MOOCs class is designed for 20 hours lectures in 8 weeks time. Today's lecture is focused on introduction to natural gas. I am Dr. Pankaj Tiwari, course instructor for this course. So, let us go straight to understand what is natural gas. By the definition, natural gas is a complex mixture of hydrocarbon. Those hydrocarbon ranges from C1 methane up to C7, C8 with some non-hydrocarbon gases like carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, water vapor, trace amount of nitrogen and some rare gases like helium and others. So, it is a mixture of hydrocarbon and non-hydrocarbon gases. These hydrocarbon gases are combustible by nature and produce the energy when it is combusted. So, it is natural gas comes under the subcategory of petroleum. It follows the same theory as for the oil leak like the organic material underneath the surface gone through the geological time scale heating under the pressure and got converted into gas as it is applied to oil. It ignites when the air and gas mixture is between 5 and 15. So, 5 is the lower explosive limit and 15 is the high explosive limit or higher explosive limit. The combustion reaction goes like this. CH4 plus 2O2 gives 1 mole of CO2, 2 moles of H2O with some energy generation that is 891 kilo joule. In general, the energy is measured in terms of BTU and one standard cubic feet natural gas gives us the BTU between 500 to 1550 that depends on the composition. For example, here the reaction is shown just for the methane because methane is the dominating compounds of the natural gas, but when higher carbon number or hydrocarbon gases are present in natural gas, they produce more energy. Similar time, if non-hydrocarbon gases, those are non-combustible, they do not contain any energy, are present in significant amount or significant percent, they reduce the energy of the gas. That is why the energy content of natural gas varies from 500 to 1550 BTU. So, another unit which is commonly used for the natural gas is therm, that therm is equal to 1 million BTU, 1 million BTU is 1 mm BTU. The natural gas is colorless, odorless, combustible and clean fuel. It is odorless, so it does not smell. To have the detection capacity of this gas, some mercaptans like thiols were added in the natural gas to detect its leakage or its presence. Natural gas comes under the hydrocarbon energy sector and it can be classified as conventional and unconventional energy source. Under the conventional like fossil energy, so for example, natural gas, oil and coal, they comes under the fossil energy and all are being produced under the conventional technology. Natural gas is a gaseous fuel, oil is a liquid fuel and coal is a solid fuel. The important point is natural gas is present in natural gas reservoir in coal reservoir and as well as in the coal seams. So, natural gas having the presence in all three fossil fuel energy sources. Under the unconventional natural gas, geological setting and rock type rather than to the gas itself define the unconventional sources. This is not the composition of the natural gas are different or they are altogether completely different when we talk about the unconventional natural gas. It is geological setting means how natural gas is trapped in the reservoir formation or in the coal seams and how long it was there under what geological formation it got trapped defined as shell gas, tight gas, gas hydrate, coal bed methane and other sources those may be possible those can fall under the category of unconventional natural gas sources. So, tight gas it is relatively permeable rock like a limestone or sandstone with a very low permeability like less than 1 milli darcy and gas is just trapped there. Similar in the shell gas, gas is trapped in fine grained sedimentary rock like a shell structure and to 
to extract the natural gas from these sources certain kind of the fracture need to be created. We will discuss this unconventional energy resources in detail when we will be discussing unconventional energy almost at the end of this course. Coal bed methane is also unconventional energy resource where the gas trapped in coal seam it means it is adsorbed in the solid matrix of the coal. Gas hydrate is another form of the unconventional resource of natural gas where the gas molecules are in the form of crystalline structure that is similar to like a case like structure where the water molecule is stabilized by small gas molecules. So, the one gas molecule like either a methane or very light hydrocarbons are trapped by water molecules and that form is called gas hydrate. It is believed there is a plenty of these unconventional natural resources are available across the globe. The theory is similar gradually the organic material got converted into coal, oil and gas. If we look unconventional natural gas resources across the globe, there are several reports published every year like energy outlook, EIA and energy information administration from USA and several others. They publish the data based on the data collected from different countries not only about the supply and demand all form of the energy, but their uses in different sector like industry, domestic sector, residential sector, transportation sector and what are the new forms of the energy are being introduced. So, for example, when the unconventional natural gas explode, they were also become the part of that study. This slide shows in different countries what are the reserves in the form of coal bed methane for the natural gas production in shell gas, tide gas and total are available. You can see here United States is having the most unconventional energy reserves in all the form either it is coal bed methane, shell gas and tide gas. Similar this list does not include about the gas, gas hydrate and it is believed the gas hydrate reserve are 50 times the reserve of conventional natural gas. So, huge amount of the unconventional natural gas is available that is still either being explored or under the exploration process. United States had developed several technology like how to fracture effectively to get the gas out of shell gas. Similarly, how to extract the methane or lighter gases from the coal bed methane. In coal bed methane mostly it is light, uh, it is methane gas while in other cases shell gas and gas hydrate it is methane plus lighter fraction of hydrocarbon like C2, C3, C4, C5 up to. This list include for several countries, India is also here which is having the reserve for the coal bed methane, while other sector like shell gas is still under the exploration, some report value for the tight gas is present. There are several report as I mentioned. And if you see, if you compare the data published in different reports, you will see there is a disparity between the data reported. Those data reported uh, in a particular report depends on the data collected and the model applied, especially the model applied to project the future energy demands. So if you see in a particular report, there is a uh, X amount of the energy worldwide or in a particular country is required and how this energy is achieved by different sector or different form of the energy may be different slightly with the others, but these reports are very good in terms of deciding or, or projecting the data in which direction the world energy demand and supply ratio is going to be and what are the sources those can meet this demand and supply relationship. So, in 2011 EIA published the data where it shows different countries and their conventional tight gas, shell gas and coal bed methane reserves in the year of 2011. You can see Russia is dominating in terms of natural gas. Similarly, after Russia it is Middle East, Iran, Saudi Arabia, they are having most of 
नेचुरल गैस और कन्वेंशनल रिजर्वायर वाल इन टर्म्स ऑफ अनकन्वेंशनल इट इज़ यूनाइटेड स्टेट विच इज़ डोमिनेटिंग इन ऑल सेक्टर सो वी कैन से ऑल टूगेदर अनकन्वेंशनल रिसोर्सेज आर बिगर देन दी कन्वेंशनल रिसोर्सेज नॉर्थ अमेरिका हैज अ मच बिगर पोर्सन ऑफ अनकन्वेंशनल रिसोर्सेज इन टर्म्स ऑफ द फ्यूचर ऑफ द नेचुरल गैस अमेरिका इज गोइंग टू डोमिनेट इन टर्म्स ऑफ द रिजर्व दे आर हैविंग इन दी फॉर्म ऑफ अनकन्वेंशनल एनर्जी ऑफ नेचुरल गैस टाइट गैस शेल गैस कोल बैड मीथेन अनकन्वेंशनल रिसोर्स मे चेंज एज आई एक्सप्लेन द डेटा प्रोवाइडेड बाई पर्टिकुलर कंट्री इन अ पर्टिकुलर सर्वे और स्टडी और द मॉडल अप्लाइड वेन बी टॉक अबाउट फोर कास्टिंग द डेटा सो द डेटा मे चेंज डिपेंड ऑन द सैम्पल डेटा कलेक्टेड एंड प्रोसेस टू मेक सर्टेन एजम्सन एंड डिसीजन्स so here i can show you the total primary energy demand of the world the data are taken the source is given below so you can see several reports are published like this is from the international energy agency in 2017 they had published the data and where it is compared like in 2014 how the world energy is supplied by different source or form of energy like oil contributed 31% to the total energy need of the world while gas was at 21% similar coal was at 29% and other like renewable bio energy hydro and nuclear energy were also added in this study when this study was projected for future like in 2014 we can see the gas is 22% from 21 to 22% oil is going to downside like 22% but this is again the energy need will be more in 2040 compared to 2014 to meet that higher demand or the the energy demand in 2040 this study project like the gas will be contributing more compared to other fossil like coal and oil so the coal and oil will be partially or or significantly be replaced by the natural gas so natural gas to be the fossil fuel with substantial growth in uses in the future the growth in the natural gas production will be because of the technology being developed to utilize natural gas effectively like lng fuel cell technology where the fuel cell need hydrogen and that hydrogen can be produced by steam reforming of methane to get the hydrogen for the fuel cells so fuel cell technology being developed and to get the hydrogen methane or the natural gas may get a significant market there and others technology like the uses of natural gas uh, in a different form like gtl may significantly be advanced in terms of the technology thus the contribution of natural gas will also be more another data set that can be projected here like this is for the world energy if we look in a particular country in the united state even in 2000 itself the natural gas was contributing about 22% of the total country need and it was projected like by 2010 this will meet around 25% and that's happening natural gas not only from the conventional reservoir but because of the exploration and utilization of the unconventional energy resources more than 25% of uh, more than 25% uh, energy requirement of the united state is being fulfilled by the use of natural gas so uh, world energy scenario and role of natural gas global demand is supposed to reach 680 quadrillion btu in 2000 40 as per the assumption this is 25% increment will be 25% of that energy will be shared by natural gas it is expected china and india contribute about 45% of world energy demand growth so because of the industrialization is happening because of the population these developing country like india and china they need more energy and that energy can be fulfilled with the help of natural gas or the conventional unconventional natural gas resources natural gas grows the most of any energy type and reaching a quarter of all demands so we see here in this chart 2016 data which is projected to 2040 we will see coal contributes around 
this is oil contribution and natural gas also significantly share the total energy supply. It is projected like in 2014, the share of coal will get down while the natural gas will increase. The total need will be classified in four major segment like transportation, residential, industry, electricity generation. We can see in three years 2016, projected year 2025 and 2040, we see in transportation it is still mostly dominated by oil, while in residential as in the western country or especially in the USA, natural gas is used as a heating media or heating fuel for the houses and the building. So, natural gas significantly share the uses as a fuel for residential and commercial sector. In industry also, natural gas is having its own sector, its own market and it is supposed to be increased as we go further in terms of time. Similar for the electricity generation, natural gas is going to dominate compared to the coal because of its properties like it is clean in terms of emission it releases to environment compared to coal. Natural gas demand increases significantly and gains shares in all sectors. We can see in all sector natural gas is going to get its share even in the transportation if you see compared to 2016 and 2014 the natural gas contribution is higher. Uh, this is because of the techn it is believed like the technology will be developed where the natural gas can be converted into uh, liquid fuel or maybe the engine may be modified to accept the natural gas as a fuel. Utilization of natural gas, it can be used both as a feedstock for petrochemicals and fertilizer industries as well as fuel for several sectors especially electricity generation. Natural gas liquid consumption like this is NGL, it is about to be double by 2040. It is projected data again in one of the report published in 2018. Global electricity demands grows by 60 percent and the meet to this electricity demand natural gas is being considered as a prominent source. So, the world is shifting to lower carbon source for electricity generation led by natural gas and others, others may include the solar energy, uh, thermal energy and other sector. If we look on typically chart that is the energy demand or the consumption of energy in natural uh, energy in the United States, the natural gas is being utilized in commercial sector like 13 percent transportation 2.85 percent, industry 38.16 percent and residential 21.58 percent. So, this chart shows in 2000 to 2002, the transportation sector was using very less amount of the natural gas, but if the technology can be developed as I said in, uh, in either in the form of fuel cell, those can be used in the vehicles or in terms of converting gas to liquid, the transportation sector will be consuming significant amount of the natural gas to meet its need. In terms of industrial utilization, as I said for the electricity generation, the data if plotted from 2000 to 2014, this report is published in 2018 again. So, some are the history data, some are the projected data and you can see the coal is almost become stagnant in terms of the contribution to meet the electricity generation as a fuel. Natural gas is increasing its contribution as a fuel to generate the electricity significantly you can say from 2000 from a small area it is going to a bigger area like here. Uh, nuclear and others will also be contributing significantly because the energy demand will also be increased by 2040. If we look in the pie chart the electricity uh, generated from all these sources will be utilized mostly industrial, transportation, small sector and residential sector it will be consuming more. So, with this background let us come to the class of this natural gas engineering which is designed specifically for the conventional natural gas production system. 
unconventional component was added in this class that will be discussed in more detail about the tight gas, shell gas, coal bed methane, gas hydrate and some other form of the natural gas produced from other sources like the pyrolysis of some carbonaceous material. Altogether, this course is supposed to discuss primarily on the conventional natural gas production. So, this is the production system if you see here uh, the reservoir from where the gas is being produced through the well bore reaching to surface facilities. The separator is there that separating if multi phases are present like a small amount of gas, a small amount of oil, water and some sand particles. Further, before the natural gas goes to consumer, it is supposed to process with several unit uh, to, to refine the natural gas and further it needs to go to transportation sector where it will go to end user, those end user may be customer. Uh, individual customer, maybe industry or some other organization. So, we see in the second week, we will be discussing about properties of the natural gas because during this entire process, natural gas composition changes. If we are having one particular well, the composition will be different. Composition in the sense the methane, ethane, propane, butane, their percent relatively will change. Yes, methane will be dominating in all the forms and some inorganic gases will also be present. Some are unwanted, they are just waste, they are not having any energy value. Not only energy value, they also create a problem during the transportation or utilization. For example, water vapor, S2S, they are corrosive in the nature, S2S is like very uh, fatal gas. We will discuss all these removal processes. Here, as you can see, the natural gas that is being produced from this porous reservoir domain because of the pressure difference, it is having certain composition in terms of hydrocarbon and non-hydrocarbon gases. When this gas is traveling all the way to surface, it is reaching to separator where the oil, gas and water will be separated. After that, it will go to separator. After separator, it will go to dehydration where the water will be removed and then it will go to removing the contamination especially S2S, CO2 and then nitrogen extraction. Ultimately, whatever the composition of the reservoir is producing, they may change or they get change after each process and because of that, the properties of the natural gas changes because properties of natural gas as it is not an ideal gas the properties get changes and we need to evaluate them at a particular condition the natural gas is available. For example, under the reservoir pressure condition, it, the properties will be different. When it comes to surface, the properties will be different and when it is passing through each unit because of the composition changes and because of the temperature and pressure condition changes, the properties will be different. So, you see here the whatever the composition of the natural gas at different stages, in most of the cases, the natural gas that goes to consumer is mostly pure methane with a small trace amount of the other hydrocarbon and non-hydrocarbon gases. Natural gas which is also containing some higher hydrocarbon compounds, those are having more value, they are more energy density material. For example, our domestic LPG cylinder is butane and propane that is having more energy than the methane. So, the more energy compound can be extracted and most and the unwanted or impurities like CO2, SGS needs to be extracted before it is being sent to pipeline to, to reach to uh, end users. Uh, the gas will take different terminology, different names, those we will discuss in the next uh, slide. After processing, the transportation sector will come. In transportation, we are having the relationship how much amount of the gas should be transported and at what distance it should be transported will decide in which form this should be transported. For example, if it is a long distance and a long uh, and a significant quantity, we may have to choose either the pipeline or LNG. LNG is liquid, liquefied natural gas depend on the terrain it is going to face and the distance it is going to cover, one of the option may be chosen. We will discuss transportation 
or other for or converting natural gas into other form like GTL gas to liquid, LNG liquefied uh, natural gas we will discuss in detail when we will go through this course. What we can discuss in today's class is about how natural gas is produced and what terminology is used to understand the natural gas production system. So, conventional natural gas production if we see here this is again the same uh, diagram where the natural gas is produced from the reservoir and this process goes through several steps. Na conventional natural gas production is not a one man job, it is a team that involves from starting of exploration to drilling to well completion, then production, gas processing, refining, transportation, distribution to ultimate consumer. It include all sort of the uh, people those are expert in for example, dealing with the legal issues, making the decision, reservoir engineer those understand the reservoir, geologist those understand the geology of the uh, formation, uh, refining gas, drilling engineers all sort of the team they, they discuss and they decide conventional natural gas production fate. So, if we begin from uh, exploration technique this is a job done by the geologist and geophysicist. So, geological survey are done by the geologist, they collect several data set and geophysicist understand the rock formation or put those data together to understand the formation. And based on the exploration technique, it is decide a particular look at a particular location the well should be drilled or not drilled. These are the similar technique as used for the oil exploration, similar are used for the gas exploration. Like the geological survey are done to understand the geology of a particular region where, where there is a possibility of finding natural gas or not. With the advance of the technique like the seismic survey, uh, the chances of getting success is high. As example, it, until the late 1970s, successful drilling was a hit and miss operation. So, if you are going to find out a location where there is a possibility of finding fossil fuels like for example, oil or gas before drilling it was a hit and miss operation and it is success ratio was 1 ratio 10. So, if you are going to hit going to drill 10 wells maybe the ratio is just one place where you are getting significant potential reserve of the gas or oil, then 9 are just going as a tri well. But with the advance of the technology like the seismic survey in a 2D, 3D and now 4D form, the data are collected and they are able to give a good estimation of where to, where to drill and how to drill at a particular location that can be done with the help of seismic survey data. Other data form like magnetometer where the magnetic properties of the reservoir rock is used to collect the data and logging data where the density log or some other rock log data are recorded during the uh, uh, drilling time or during the processing time to understand the geological formation and where is the possibility of the drill uh, and uh, the possibility of getting the gas available there. Advanced techniques like computer modeling are being uh, developed and they are having a more chances of predicting the natural gas resource at a precise location. Now, the success rate has been improved from 14 percent in 1970s to 49 percent in 2000. I do not know the recent data, but it is getting advanced with the advancement in the technology those are associate how to explore the data and where to drill or not to drill decision making process. So, I summarize some of the steps like exploration that decide the potential of reservoir and that is put a question to make a decision where to drill the wells. Extraction once the location has been identified it is decided we are going to drill at a particular location. So, the extraction steps comes and that says how to drill or how to perform the drilling process underground reservoir to surface means from the underground reservoir or the fluid is available how to bring it to surface is a job of 
drilling engineer or it is a part of drilling process. Several complications comes during the process, which type of the drill bit should be used, at what type of the mud should be used, several several steps comes in that part that we are not going to discuss in detail. Then after extraction it comes the production that says natural gas that is brought to surface from the underground how to process the natural gas uh, by using different techniques. Once refinement has done, gas is ready to be used, it needs to be transported from the place of uh, production to end user that should be accomplished with some transportation media and that could be either by laying down the pipeline or by LNG or by converting some other form. A storage how it is accomplished and why it is necessary should also be considered during the conventional natural gas production. As I said, during the summer time, the natural gas is being produced, but it, it has less market compared to winter time, because during the winter time, the more gas or natural gas is required to heat the houses and building to maintain the comfortable temperature. Distribution delivery of natural gas from the major pipeline to end user, this also need to be consider during the business of uh, natural gas production to consumer, uh, marketing the gas from the wellhead to end user. So, other than these steps also several steps are involved, those I skipped. These are the highlighted steps, those decides or those describe how the natural gas business start from first place exploration to marketing when the end users are using it. and. Uh, natural gas is being used either as a feed stock or as a fuel. So, let us come to conventional reservoir and this slide shows how to know once a location has been identified, we, the drilling has been completed, the production is started, how to know which type of the reservoir it is. It is a gas reservoir, it is a oil reservoir or it is condensed well reservoir means the condensed well means it is also producing the liquid along with the gas. So, to do that there is a term called GOR gas to oil ratio. It means when the fluid is being produced from a particular well, we can separate it at the separator and can quantify how much oil and how much gas is produced from this particular well. And if we calculate gas to oil ratio in the unit of standard cubic feet to standard tank barrel, if the ratio is greater than 1 lakh, it is considered as a gas well. It might be containing some small amount of the oil, but it is mostly the gas well. Oil well, if the ratio is less than 5000 SCF per STB, means it is mostly the oil and just gas is associated or dissolved in the oil. Condensed well where the ratio is between 1 lakh and 5000, the well is called condensed well. So, once the production is started to identify which type of the well it is, because that decide what type of the surface facility should be installed. If it is a gas well, the surface facilities installed will be different than the oil. Similar not only uh, the facilities to refine the gas, but to collect the samples. So, the GOR value that decides which type of the well it is depend on several factor, how the fluid are produced underneath, how they accumulated in a particular reservoir location from where they are being produced. So, this is this can be happened in several ways. One of the uh, things that I highlighted here is a anticlinal trap. So, in anticlinal trap, the gas is in a, the reservoir is in a dome shape where the fluids are got trapped. So, to have the fluid or the petroleum reserves in the reservoir, there should be three types of the rock available like the source rock where this geological time still uh, thermal under pressurized condition is happening and the organic material is getting converted to coal, gas and oil that source rock should be available. In our case, the source rock should be able to produce the gas and there should be a reservoir rock or a permeable rock through which the sand, uh, through which the gas is being traveled to a location where it can get accumulated in a significant quantity 
and there should also be a cap rock which is impermeable rock and not allowing this fluid to come out to surface by its own. So, to have the reservoir or petroleum reservoir these three types of the rocks must be present in a particular uh, domain then only we can have a significant or potential reserves of the petroleum fluid like for gas it is a gas reservoir. This anticlinal trap that says this is in this shape where the gas is on the top then oil and water got accumulated oil on the top because of the uh, less density compared to oil and water and sometimes this gas is called the uh, this, this production from this anticlinal or the arrangement in this form is called a gas cap drive reservoir. So, when the well is drilled here it depends on the location from where we are producing either the oil will produce first or the gas will produce first or the water will produce first and later on it will be a mixture of oil, gas and water. Considering this we can say in any reservoir uh, so, there is a definition of reservoir, field and pool. Reservoir is a place where this uh, organic material getting converted to petroleum substance and those petroleum substance got accumulated uh, in a significant potential quantity to be produced. Field is like several reservoir with a similar structure is present in the same, same region while the pools with a different structure the reservoir are present is called the pool. Another classification is for any particular reservoir is associate gas reservoir or non associate gas reservoir. So, if the reservoir is producing a gas with oil and the gas is dissolved in that oil, it is called the associate gas reservoir. Associate gas reservoir is also uh, comes under the category where the free gas is in contact with the crude oil. So, when we are producing the oil the gas is also being produced while it is not even dissolved in it this is called the associate gas reservoir means the gas is being produced in the association of oil. Non associate gas means it is just gas that is being produced or with a very minimal amount of liquid or the oil is being produced. Third category as condensate gas, gas with high content of liquid hydrocarbon. So, with this definition if we club this, this represents the similar what is G O R in a numerical term if less than 5000 it is oil, if greater than 1 lakh it is gas well, if it is in between this is a condensate well. Natural gas industry if we look towards the natural gas industry sector and the history of the natural gas we can say a gaseous fuel natural gas is a gaseous fuel it produces with oil field, it produces in gas field, it produces in coal bed also. Initially natural gas was just a byproduct of crude oil production. So, if we go to history there are story about the natural gas. For example, uh, people were not aware about the natural gas, the, it was just being released to the atmosphere without knowing what gas it is. In ancient time the natural gas when it is catching uh, fire by its own it is just getting flared people were not about not aware about why this fire is there. It was first discovered in the United States in Fredonia, New York in 1821 and since then the uses of the natural gas and the discoveries are having significant disparity. Sometimes it is used even it is discovered it is used for the local purpose only for example in the oil production system where the natural gas is also being produced natural gas is used just for the local uses like the energy required for the uh, oil fields or just in the nearby region just to light the lamp and other part. Otherwise, in most of the cases it is just boiled or flared to the atmosphere. A natural gas has been used as a fuel in area immediately surrounding the gas field because there was no way to store it, there was no way to transport it from one place to the other place, it was having no value and the only option left either use it in the local area or in the surrounding or just either flared it or let it go to the atmosphere. A natural gas is also a greenhouse gas effect. Now, we cannot let it go to atmosphere even if we want because it contributes to greenhouse gas effect. 
oil well gas was often flared in huge quantity. So, so far it is believed like significant amount or quantity of the natural gas is already flared and this practice is still in the uh, in some of the countries where the natural gas is not having any local market, where natural gas is not having any mean of transporting from one place to other place to use it, it is being flared to the atmosphere. One of the most cleanest, safest, useful form of energy is natural gas despite having all these things because of the lack of infrastructure in the older time or in the past, it could not be used very effectively. Now, if you see the trend from the place of no use of natural gas, now we are exploring unconventional energy resources that shows the potential or the uh, energy need which can be met with the help of natural gas. So, a gas that was having no value, no recognition, now we are developing the technology to use it very effectively. When it comes to reserves of the natural gas, they are classified in two parts like proved reserves and potential reserves. Proved reserves are those are either drilled and we know what is the potential of that particular reservoir. It is proven this much natural gas will be produced. If we collect all the data, we can say worldwide this much is the proved reserve or in a particular country, this is the proved reserve. Potential reserves are the estimated data. Those are based on the experience, based on the uh, based on several assumptions or based on belief, based on scientific evidence, it is believed like this much amount of natural gas is still to be explored and that is potential reserves are available, those can be used to meet the future energy demand. If we go by the data, 2000 it was reported 3600 trillion cubic feet natural gas reserves is available that is still the proved reserve not the potential reserve, but in 2005 the data has been reported to 6400 trillion cubic feet and this depends on the data collected, not only data collected, but if the new field of natural gas are explored, new reserves are found and that is reflect in this quantity. In United itself in 2010, 2000 uh, the data says 1050 trillion cubic feet was the proved reserve. Potential reserve constitute the those quantity of natural gas that are believed to exist. That is why the data are not accurate because the countries those are exploring the gas are producing the data. They are having the estimate of the uh, reserve of gas that can be available but certain region of the world where there is no exploration, there is no, uh, there is no plan to uh, estimate the natural gas are not accounted under the potential resources head and the value varies from 650 trillion cubic feet to 5000 trillion cubic feet. Even this data is reported in 2001, the data may have got better with the advanced technology, those are getting developed. So, conventional natural gas production, what we are going to understand how natural gas is produced from here to surface, how it is controlled with the help of choke and then it is going to separator and several unit. You see there are several terms are written like the tri gas, tri residue gas and L NGL and some other gases those are the fraction of the natural gas, those have been collected separately to send it, to sell, to, to sell them out separately to get the more value. In next few lectures, after completing the properties of the natural gas, we will be focused on the production from natural reservoirs and processing. During this, there are several definitions or terminology will appear. We can discuss them one by one like for example, lean gas and rich gas. Lean gas is mostly the methane gas which is purified, refined, valuable compound where extracted to, to, to sell them uh, separately, impurities 
they are separated out before it is being sent to consumer while the rich gas is a gas which is having more number more carbon number hydrocarbon like C2, C3, C4. Dry gas when there is a small amount of oil is present gas is mostly the dry gas which is having only the gaseous compound present in it is called the dry gas. Wet gas when the condensate condensable compound or the condensate are present in the gas the wet gas the gas is called the wet gas. In terms of quantity 0 0.1 gallon per 1000 feet Q if the data says 0.1 gallon liquid is per 1000 feet Q gas is present if the value is less than this number it is a dry gas if it is higher than this number it is a wet gas. Other terminology is sore gas and the sweet gas if the natural gas is containing H2S, CO2 means the gases those are sore in nature they need to be separated out while removing these gases and after that process the process is called sweetening process and after sweetening process the gas is called the sweet gas. Residue gas when all the compound has been extracted the residue gas that is going to send to transportation line to, 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 to send it to consumer is called the residue gas and casing head gas the gas which is being produced from a reservoir and reaching at the well head this is called the casing head gas. The composition of the residue gas will completely different than the casing head gas casing head gas will be having higher carbon number hydrocarbon as well as non hydrocarbon gases in it. Associate gas and non associate gas we already discussed in detail the associate gas can be in the form of dissolved gas or just a free gas that is being produced with the oil non associate gas which is having very minimal amount of the oil present but mostly it is the gas. Unconventional gases we discussed the CBM, sand gas, shell gas, gas hydrate more detailed discussion will be done later on when we will be discussing unconventional energy resources and their contribution to natural gas uses. Other terminology biogas, Mars gas, swam gas, landfill gas. So, this terminology will appear old time Mars gas, swam gas, landfill gas where you we are named for the natural gas also. Gasoline is different than the natural gas in United States or in some other countries gasoline is also called the gas. So, when you are going to any uh, any um, uh, gas station it does not mean you are going to get the natural gas it is gasoline which is being sold at that but that station. Domestic gas that is not, not actually the natural gas uh, it is a combination of propane and butane. In United States field unit system mostly the business of the natural gas is done in the US field unit system. So, when we are dealing with the natural gas we should be more careful about the unit system we are choosing. During the course you will see several formulas are there and those formulas are big because of the complexity involved in the process especially on because of the properties of the fluid means natural gas are changing with temperature and pressure. The form could be uh, natural gas could be in the form of NGL, could be LPG, CNG, GTL. We will understand all these terms one by one during this course. Altogether, what we can say natural gas is having the composition dominated by methane, 70 to 90 percent it is methane. Ethane, propane, butane contribute all together between 0 to 20 percent and some higher hydrocarbon can also be present in the trace amount. Carbon dioxide CO2 is 0 to 8 percent, oxygen is also in a small amount, a small amount we are having the nitrogen that goes up to 5 percent, hydrogen sulphide could be up to 5 percent and rare gases like argon, helium, neon. In fact, natural gas is the primary source of getting the rare gases. The reaction says it is a combustible by nature and it produces the energy. So, that is why the natural gas and its utilization to produce the energy becomes important not only because not only the natural gas content the energy that is why it should be 
consider as future energy source, but under the carbon constant world, when we talk about fossil fuel utilization and compare natural gas with coal and oil emission religious by natural gas combustion to atmosphere are less compared to oil and coal. This chart shows about fossil fuel emission level per pound emission level pounds per billion BT of energy input. So, to get the similar amount of the energy like natural gas, oil and coal, if we are burning them, combusting them, the carbon dioxide released from natural gas is less than oil and coal. Carbon monoxide is slightly higher reported, but it is also can be converted to some other form like syngas and then later on to other form. Nitrogen oxide is less, sulfur dioxide is less, particulate matters are less, mercury is not present. Altogether, it is reported in, in 1998, the natural gas can be considered very environment friendly fuel, it is religious, very less pollutant to environment and compared to other fossil fuel like oil and coal should always be given the preference. So, natural gas production and demand, if we see the scenario, the primary producer of natural gas are USA and Australia, Russia, Qatar and ASEAN are the primary importers. China has increased the use of natural gas to that of coal power plants. So, primary use of the natural gas in China replacing the coal and using natural gas as a source of energy. India has increased its use of natural gas significantly. So, India also need natural gas now. European Union has completely stopped the use of coal based power plant, the switching to natural gas a lesser carbon emission source. Altogether, what it says due to the nature of natural gas, natural gas is being considered in several countries as a source of energy, especially for the electricity generation due to less emission, but it depends on availability of the natural gas in that reason, how natural gas can be transported or imported and exported from one point to other point. For example, United States, it imports natural gas as well as export the natural gas. So, in one part of the country, it is importing, another part it is exporting because of the uh, nature of the natural gas transportation business in which form it can be transported, either it can be transported by pipeline, could be in the form of LNG or some other form. It becomes important, yes natural gas can be used as a very effective environmental friendly source of energy, but is it available or not? Similar, when natural gas is available, in what form it can be used? or the pipeline are installed there or it is just being flared to the atmosphere. So, import and export business will going to govern how nat effectively natural gas can be utilized to produce the energy. When we talk about the future of natural gas industry, 19th century was considered the century of coal that supported the initiation of industrial revolution in Europe and in the rest of the world. The 20th century was the century of oil. So, first it was coal that, that was used very, uh, that was used for energy generation, later on it came to oil and oil was used in 20th century especially for the support of global economy because of the transportation fuel. Uh, at the end of the last century, natural gas took over the position of coal as the number two energy source behind oil. So, now coal is being replaced by natural gas and especially in the electricity generation sector. Natural gas is now becoming the premier fuel for choice for the world economy because of its nature of uh, environmental friendly and due to imposing of carbon tax and carbon uh, emission releases, the world is moving towards low carbon emission fuels and natural gas is getting a good place in that segment. Natural gas is superior to other energy sources not only in economic attractiveness, but also in the environmental concern. If we see the future of the natural gas industry, we see 
it depends on several factors. It depends on from where the natural gas is being produced, how it is getting produced, it is conventional natural gas production or unconventional natural gas production, are you importing natural gas or you are exporting natural gas, are you having local market for the natural gas or you are supposed to install the facilities to, to utilize the natural gas and how the advancement are happening in terms of the technology development to utilize natural gas. For example, fuel cell technology. In fuel cell technology, we need hydrogen and that hydrogen can be produced from methane plus H2O. This process is called steam reforming and if it is done for example, at a nickel, nickel catalyst at a temperature range of 800 degrees Celsius and 600 psi, it produces H2 plus CO. The conditions can be modified by developing the uh, technology, developing the catalyst, suitable catalyst, reducing the temperature and pressure requirement. But because of this steam reforming of methane, we can produce carbon. S2 that can be used for the fuel cell and carbon monoxide. That carbon monoxide can go through the reaction CO plus H2O at a, some catalyst and some temperature and pressure condition, mostly it happens at atmospheric pressure condition to form S2 plus CO2. So, altogether by having methane as a source of fuel or source material or a feed stock, we can perform the steam reforming and can produce the hydrogen for fuel cell technology. If this technology can get advanced, significant amount of natural gas will be required. Similar for the GTL like Fisher trough synthesis, if a better advancement can be done to use effectively gas to convert into liquid, more natural gas will be required and when it is, when it is getting more need, the business can be set up effectively and the price can be reduced significantly. Advancement in technology development for LNG and GTL that I just discussed, pipeline infrastructure again that I said how it is being transported that is also a matter of its business development, its uses. If from the today's lecture what I would like to convey there are significant possibilities of using natural gas as a premier fuel source because of environmental concern, because of its availability and not only it is under the expectation United States and several other countries are meeting their energy need with a significant quantity of natural gas. So, it is already established natural gas is a much better cleaner fuel than the other fossil energy sources like the oil and coal. With this, I would like to end my today's lecture. In tomorrow's lecture, we may continue the similar discussion or we will also cover about the phase behavior of natural gas. As it is said, natural gas is a mixture of hydrocarbon and non-hydrocarbon. So, when we are dealing with the natural gas under the PVT or thermodynamics behavior like pressure, volume and temperature condition, when the conditions are changing, how natural gas will behave will be understood with the help of the phase behavior studies like uh, it is a liquid phase or it is in the gas phase or it is sharing some part of the liquid phase, some part of the gas phase depend on the temperature and pressure conditions. With this, I would like to thank you for listening the video and then we will meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much.